Son and the Holy Spirit. On this first Sunday of Lent, we're very happy to be joined by the fourth graders who are sitting in the front row in rapt attention. And uh, the Director of Religious Education, Mr. Serrato, you know Mr. Serrato. He sings like Tony Orlando, met that Mr. Serrato. <laughs> He told me something. He told me that the fourth grade teacher, uh, Joanne Halloran, has been teaching for 20 years. Thank you very much. We sit in this beautiful church with an opportunity to reflect on the meaning of life and we hear this kind of scary story about Jesus being tempted. But we deal with temptation, we struggle, we are kind of like archers and we draw back the bow and we try and be perfect and we miss the mark. But we're aiming for goodness. There's something attractive about sin, otherwise we wouldn't do it. There's something alluring, if you will. But when we miss the mark, we say, oh, I can try again. God lets us try again. But the Lord and our faith traditions give us a great deal of help. We use symbols, we use symbols to remind us what we're here for, what were we doing. There's all sorts of tangles in life and things get messy and confusing. Sometimes we're a distance from home and we say, I just wanna go home, I just wanna go home. There's an inner division, sometimes there's an interior woundedness, there's a heaviness, there's a sense of burden and a longing for love. Where we sit directs us towards heaven. We hear the popular song about the circle of life, but that's not a Christian song. We don't go round and round and round repeating things. No, we go onward and upward, if you will. Could I have one of the fourth graders help me? Neve, you wanna help me? Here. Did you ever see um, Wheel of Fortune? And that nice lady that points to everything? So you can help me by pointing things. So don't point like that, because that's rude, do this. So over here, Neve will point out to us. Go ahead. Very turn and smile to the audience. As you can see, Neve is pointing out, this is called an ambry. It's the holy oil, it's the oil of the sick. We bring this oil to people that are sick to bring the love of you and the Lord. In the oil of catechumens for people about to be baptized and the sacred chrism that smells really nice, like your perfume, Neve. And then over here, Neve will point to the baptismal font, that big bathtub. See the big bathtub? Yeah. This is where babies are born into new life in Jesus Christ. And then right next to that, Neve will point out to us this enormous candlestick that you can't move. There's carvings, and it's the history of salvation, all the saints and the angels and the prophets. And then Neve will make her way over here to the altar, gingerly, with confidence. Then do the spin thing they always do. Spin and point. Very good. This is a candle. This candle is a symbol of a Christian. They're on fire with love for God. And Neve, if you go over and point to the deacon, he's the, he's the nice man there. This is a deacon. A deacon's primary task is to proclaim the gospel. He's like the best storyteller ever. Of course, he has good material. And Neve, you point to the empty chair. That's where Christ is supposed to sit. But instead, you got me. <laughs> Eve, thank you very much. You can take you can take a seat. But wait, there's more. Aiden, come here. Aiden, could you point up in the air at these tie rods? Very good. If you notice up there, each of those instead of nuts and bolts in the middle, what do we have? But we have symbols. Starting at the back, we have the symbol of the Holy Spirit descending down from heaven. And if you look all the way forward, Aiden will point out to the top of the tabernacle, the very same symbol. You come in, you're directed upwards and forwards, not that circle of life thing. You go forward to what? The Holy Spirit coming to dwell within us to give us the strength to do good. And then Aiden will point to the next symbol, which is a wheel. Now, what is that? It's called St. Catherine's wheel. Poor Catherine was tortured on a wheel for her faith. It reminds us there's some part of suffering in life, but we know that we got that memo already. And after that is a trefoil. It's a symbol of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we experience the Trinity in our relationships, mom and dad, and adorable baby, right? 
the lover, the beloved, the love between them. That's what my wedding homily. We come forward and we're drawn what? Out of ourselves. It doesn't say look in, it says look out. And then Aiden, what do we have? A cross on the wall. It's called the San Damiano cross. Point. Wait, gonna lose the job. Okay, point. It's different though because the cross that is carried in by the altar servers is flat. Oh, is that flat? The front of it is flat. See, it's flat. But up there, it sticks out as a statue because Catholics want to put their hands around everything. And the communion line, did you hold that? Oh, I'm sorry. In the communion line of St. Margaret Mary's in the West Wing, there's a statue of the Sacred Heart. And people come up and they always kiss the feet of Jesus. They reach out and they touch. It looks like the Macarena actually when they come up. <laughs> in the back of the church at St. Francis, there's a statue of St. Joseph. Would you point to the statue of St. Joseph on the left? And on the right, what do you see? St. Mary? You see those because we kind of want to go up. We want to hold on to what is holy. And it's a good thing. You have the statue of Our Lady of Fatima and the statue of St. Francis. Could you point to your left? And to your right. Very good. We look at those images because we want a vision of what it is we're desiring to be in life. We desire to be good. We desire to be holy. We want what is beautiful, what is true, and what is noble. So we come here and look. But sometimes we don't look long enough. You can go to the museum. If you go to the Wadsworth Athenaeum, have you been to the Wadsworth? No. New Britain Museum of American Art? Smithsonian? The Tate Gallery? The Met? Nomads? Nomads, yes. You've been to Nomads. Watch when Americans go to an art gallery. They come in and the first thing they say, look, a gift shop, we have to go shopping. Look, a coffee shop, I'm thirsty. Oh, let's go look at the art. Here's a picture that's nice. Here's a picture that's nice. Look, there's a thermostat, there's a fire extinguisher. And they buzz right through, boom, boom, boom. This is the land of Henry IV. We gotta get this thing done. We have to... That's not how worship works. It's looking, it's holy looking. When you miss someone, you see their picture, don't you look at it longer? Who's your favorite person? Make this good. Ooh. You don't know? His mom, right answer, his mother, his favorite person. <laughs> and when you say your mom's away for something, and then you see her picture, don't you sigh? Don't you, <gasps> I miss my mom. Go ahead, sigh. Uh, okay, that was good. <laughs> and the Tony Award goes to? <laughs> we look at that why? Because that's an icon for us. Our favorite relatives, that's an icon. Maybe if you, you ever draw things in school, and if you're really good, you get put on the refrigerator, right? Not on the refrigerator? Oh, your mother's like my mother. There's nothing on the fridge. But they, they frame it or they put it up somewhere, and it's beautiful. And it reminds them of you. Have a seat. Thank you, Aiden. There's many different images, and maybe you stare at them, but I would urge you during Lent, take some extra time to come in and stare. Holy looking. You've just finished holy listening in Scripture, but when you deal with temptation, when you deal with struggles, some of this art somewhere speaks to you. And then you have to ask yourself, but why? Why do I like this? There's an abbey up in Massachusetts, I go there, and in the gallery, there's this beautiful cobalt blue window, and it's soothing. And I ask myself, why do I like this so much? You can think of this when um, you pick out a car. Oh, I gotta have a red car, I got a candy apple red, I got, oh, no, no, I want a gray car. No, I want a white car, no, I want a black car, and sleep. The colors say something to you, but why? It says something about your personality, and the Lord is trying to teach you through these holy images what it is. You know where your pew is. Your pew is opposite that particular window. But look at the window. What does it depict? That's a great way to pray. That's a great way to find out about yourself. If you look inside the old confessional, there's two hands like this. I didn't know what it was at first. One is the hand of the crucified Jesus, and the other is the hand of St. Francis, who received the stigmata. I didn't know what it was. I thought they were doing, you know, shadows or birds or something. But it's actually a great, and it's the only original Franciscan symbol in this church named for St. Francis. When you come to the doors of the church, there are two letters on the front door in the stained glass. 
Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That's Jesus. If you don't know what the symbol is, look it up. Try and figure it out, but come after Mass sometime and sit, and it's quiet, and it's beautiful. Let the church work for you so that you grow and discover holiness, so that you're able to deal with your difficulties in life, all those tangles. Um, when you come up against information but no truth, when you come up with loveless communication, and you ask yourself, who's going to rescue me? Who's going to fix this? Christ will. Christ will. These symbols will help you pray and understand the profound truths of our life as we go upward and onward towards the land of heaven. Jesus Christ will indeed heal you. Not just through art and beauty and the sacraments and the word of scripture, but even through one another.